Ever since I started talking about Disney Channel original movies, Teen Beach Movie has been the most requested one by far. Now something I didn't even know until I started doing these videos is that Teen Beach Movie was one of the most watched Disney Channel original movies of all time. Like apparently it was a really big deal when it came out. And so after putting it off for so long for really no particular reason, I figured it was about time. Let's take a walk. So right from the beginning, first thing we meet our two main characters, Brady and Mac, two high school kids who love surfing almost as much as they love each other. <laughs> surfing all day, us being together, Awesome wishes. It was just awesome. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, it was. Um, listen, Brady. Ooh, did you hear about tomorrow? Yeah! I mean, can you believe they're talking about 40-foot waves? There's a huge storm coming up from the north. Now, Brady's got a bit of a one-track mind here, and all he can really think about are like, the waves, dude. But Mac has something really important she has to tell him. And of course, before she can do that, there's always something that gets in the way. Oh, 1962, surfers, bikers. Best movie ever made. How can you two like this silliness? Mac, my dear, this movie defined an entire culture. Exactly. So this movie they're watching, Wet Side Story, Yep, is Brady's and Mac's grandfather's like favorite movie of all time. But Mac, being the more down to earth, fun is for losers type person that she is, not much of a fan. Hey, get your soggy surfer mitts off my baby sister. They sing for no reason. They come out of the water and their hair is totally dry. All right, hold on a second. Pointing out completely unimportant plot holes and editing mistakes that have no bearing on anything in the movie is my job, all right? Get your own YouTube channel. Now, while everyone's watching this movie, Mac's aunt just kind of randomly shows up out of nowhere, and we come to find out that the big secret Mac was trying to tell Brady is the fact that she's leaving tomorrow to go back east and attend some, like, rich kid hoity-toity prep school. After we lost my mom, the deal I made with my aunt was that I could stay here with my grandfather for the first part of high school. And then when it was time to get serious, I would leave with my aunt and go to the school. So she just shows up to take you away? Aren't you happy here? It's my mom's journal. <laughs> what? That doesn't even answer the question, Mac. Do you know how conversations work? Most of all, I dream that my daughter becomes a great success. So Mac's whole thing here is that she interprets what her mom wrote to mean that she wanted her to go to a prestigious school and get a nice job, be rich, and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, remember back when going to a good school meant that you actually could get a good job and like be financially secure? <laughs> Now that's a Disney Channel movie right there. So the next morning, Mac wakes up early to pack her stuff and decides to surf one last time before she has to grow up and throw her hopes and dreams in the trash like all the rest of us. But being the last time she'll ever surf ever again, she decides to take her grandpa's old classic surfboard off the wall and take it out for a spin. Or whatever people say. I mean, I don't know anything about sports. So her stunt double rides the waves for a while, but the storm's starting to get a little too strong and her grandpa's getting a little concerned. I don't like the looks of this guy, Brady. You gotta see that she's ripping it. <laughs> I mean, so am I right now, but that's a different conversation. Now, despite everything that's going on, Mac doesn't want to swim back to shore because the waves, dude. And Brady goes out to save her, but they both get swallowed up by the ocean, and that's how the movie ends. Thanks for watching. No, actually, they're totally fine, but when they eventually make it back to shore, something seems a little off. Yeah? Sunshine and sweet harmonies, time to play. That's right, in a shocking turn of events, they've somehow been transported into the world of Wet Side Story. And of course, Brady's just real excited because he knows all the words and all the dance moves and everything, and Mac is just off to the side the whole time being like, Why is everyone singing? Why is everybody happy all the time? This place is dumb. Anyway, so they follow everyone inside, and then it's time to meet these, like, Peter Pan kids who have no personalities or character arcs whatsoever. <laughs> Um, what up, dog? Far out. He thinks we're animals. No, no, it's an expression. It, it means, you know what, he's right, it does sound ridiculous. And where are you cats from? Wait a second, is that, is that John Ambrose from To All The Boys 2? You're telling me that dude was a time traveler and it never even came up once? <laughs> You guys made the wrong movie. So right after meeting the surfer kids, we also get to meet their main rivals, the Southside Serpents. The rodents. Yeah, that's what I said. Cyphers. Thought I smelled something fishy. Rodents. I know I should have laid some traps.
Okay, that was like the worst comeback of all time. Anyway, so here's the entire conflict of the movie. This diner hangout spot thing is called Big Mama's, and both groups of kids want this diner all for themselves, hence singing. Although I gotta say, I'm kinda starting to notice quite the difference here between the biker kids and the surfer kids, so like, how is this whole musical not over in five minutes? So after a bunch of singing and dancing, Brady's just over here living his best life, but Mac is not quite so thrilled. Oh, I have an idea. Pay me myself. What year was this movie made? Uh, around 1960. And yeah. you're gonna do what with a cell phone that doesn't exist yet? Brady, my entire future depends on us getting out of here. Like, now! Except maybe it'd be fun to hang for a bit. Except no, it wouldn't because I have to catch a plane in two hours! Okay, so like, I get that Mac is supposed to be this like down-to-earth realist, you know, who's gonna become incredibly cynical in a couple years because she thinks it makes her unique and interesting, but then she just ends up settling for a guy who's terrible for her, but she's convinced herself that this is the best she could ever hope to get. But that aside, she gets transported back in time to like an alternate musical universe or whatever, and the only thing she cares about is, golly gee, I hope I don't miss my flight. The heck is wrong with you, Mac? Maybe we need to figure out how we got here in order to know how to leave. So we came in on this storm, right? Maybe that has something to do with it. So we have to wait for a storm to get out of here? Yeah, but we're in luck because there's a huge storm at the end of the movie. So in order for them to go home, they basically just have to live out this movie, which they already know the entire story of anyway, so real high stakes here. Except during the next song, Mac is all like, too much happiness, I'm getting out of here. And as she's leaving, she bumps into Walmart brand Zac Efron, aka Tanner. Now, as everyone knows, Tanner's the guy who's supposed to catch Layla, this biker girl, when she falls off the stage later in the song. And then they're supposed to like, you know, stare at each other for a while. And Romeo and Juliet, true love, hey, <laughs> But now that Tanner is suddenly Twitter painted by Mac, Brady's the one who catches Layla, and now the whole movie's different. Mac, something's not right. <sighs> we can write a list of things that aren't right, starting with the fact that there are enough things to write a list. Look around. Nothing's happening. It's almost dull. It's almost like nobody knows exactly what to do next. So now that everything's changed, Brady realizes that the big storm at the end of the movie might also not happen. Because again, as everyone knows, of course, in the movie, this rich guy named Les Camembert wants to buy the beach, but he can't do that because the bikers and the surfers won't let him. So naturally, he teams up with Dr. Fusion to build a weather machine thing to stop all the waves so the surfer kids leave, and raise the humidity so the biker kids will use up all their baby powder for their leather pants. But now that the movie's different, who knows what's gonna happen? In the movie, Layla and Tanner discover Les's plan. They unite the surfers and bikers and destroy the machine which ends in an explosion that's what creates the storm so if layla and tanner don't get back together which would put the movie back on track the way it's supposed to play out then the chain of events that create that storm won't happen i will be stuck here and never get home and so now mac and brady have to get tanner and layla to fall out of love with them and fall in love with each other so then everything can go back to how it's supposed to be so that night they head on down to the beach and give it a shot do you mind if i join you <laughs> of course not music be the food of love Play on. Was that Shakespeare? No, that was me. Sometimes I talk low for effect. It works. <laughs> Thanks. I can do hi also, but chicks really dig low better. <laughs> Oh, so that's what I've been doing wrong. So later on, the biker girls are having a pajama party and the surfer guys are doing like surfer guy stuff. And so Brady and Mac try to get invited to these parties so they can hopefully put everything back to normal. Yo. Layla! Oh, you know what I have never done? Eaten a rock, kissed a squirrel. All exciting things, but no, I've never had a pajama party. <gasps> we do them all the time. We're having one tonight. You don't say. I sure I do, I just did. Tanner, what are you guys doing later? Hanging to Big Mamas, wanna come? Sure. <laughs> cool. <laughs> You know, I gotta give credit where credit's due, okay? Cause like, there are some parts of this movie that are genuinely hilarious. Now later on, at the pajama party, all the girls are sitting there talking about clothes and boys and stuff, and Mac is just barely keeping it together. <laughs> Why should a boy influence what you choose to wear? You can decide what to do. I decide to let boys decide. <laughs> to ask us out. Why don't you just ask them out? <gasps> I don't know where you're from, but around here, you have to ask a boy out without asking him. Like with your eyes. <laughs> I mean, like, asking a guy out with your eyes just sounds like the freakiest thing I could imagine. Like, you're just sitting there in Algebra 2, and then you just kind of... Hey, you wanna go to prom? But anyway, so flashing sideways over to Brady and the guys... He desperately tries to steer the mostly meaningless conversation over to Layla. We don't date no rats. You wouldn't take out a girl just because she's a biker? The Tide wouldn't take out a girl just because she's a biker. <laughs> Don't listen to those guys. Doesn't matter if a girl's a surfer, or a biker, or a bookworm. What do you like? 
<laughs> well, girls gotta have a big badonka donk and huge bazinkas. And then everyone sings the song about like whatever, who cares? And long story short, it looks like the plan to get Tanner and Layla together isn't really working out too well. Layla's completely in love with Brady, and Brady's just so gosh darn excited to be living in his favorite movie. Tanner is. Tanner. And now even Mac is starting to rethink everything she thought she knew about life and stuff and boys and stuff. So she heads on over to Layla's house to decompress a little bit. How are things with you and Brady? Good. <laughs> I guess. How are things with you and Tanner? Good. I guess. You know, sometimes I think that boys don't tell us what they're thinking just because telling us would involve more thinking. Code red, code red, cover's blown, they figured out the secret. A little while later, Mac and Brady come up with a new plan where Brady's gonna tell Layla that he wants to teach her how to surf, and Mac is gonna tell Tanner that she wants to meet him in a secluded part of the beach, for whatever reason. And in so doing, they finally manage to get Layla and Tanner to be alone together. I've always wanted to ride a motorcycle. Are you serious? No, I'm Tanner. I grew up riding. Is that why you're stunning as a moon, lighteth up a day? Who said that? I just did. Wow, I, I really like your low voice. You know, this is pretty much how I imagine every conversation goes when, like, cheerleaders and football players date each other in high school. Oh, I like your face. Oh, I like yours too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but just when it looks like the plan might actually work, all of a sudden the movie changes from a surprisingly clever musical back into a Disney Channel original movie. So, we gotta get Layla and Tanner together. We have to make them find out about Les's machine and have them destroy it before it destroys them. Going somewhere. Let's go. You're not going anywhere. Ready? Ah. That's right, in case you forgot, there's an evil scientist with a laser walking around just showing up in the last 25 minutes of the movie. So just to summarize this whole last chunk of the movie here, Mac and Brady get captured by the two evil dudes for like no reason whatsoever, and turns out being kidnapped by some middle-aged dudes who act like seven-year-olds starts to put things in perspective. If we hadn't have come here, I'd be on the plane right now heading to some private school to become something that I really don't want to be. So you're glad we came? It's like, I'm tied up, but at the same time, I've never felt more free. Anyway, so while this is all going on, Tanner and Layla start falling in love after they sing a song, like you do, and thanks to the power of an extremely rushed and underdeveloped plot, everything gets back on track. Tanner and Layla rally all the kids together to go save Mac and Brady, even though there's no way they could know that they were kidnapped in the first place. Everyone listen! Les Camembert wants to destroy us! He's built a weather... A weather machine that will stop the tide. And rust all of our bikes. Just to get rid of us. Plus, he has Mac and Brady held captive at a secret location. I don't know where it is because it's a, a secret. secret. But then, like five seconds later, they figure out that maybe there's something going on in the lighthouse with the lasers coming out of it. And so they break in to destroy the machine, which ends up causing the big storm. So then they all rush back to the beach. Brady and Mac hop on the magic surfboard or whatever that was supposed to be. And then they just kind of surf their way back to reality, my dudes. And in the end, we come to learn that due to recent events, Mac has had a little change of heart. Mackenzie, we are late for our flight, late for registration, totally off schedule, and also- And Antoinette, I want to stay here for high school. I want to be with Brady. I want to surf more. And later, I don't know what. But the thing is, I don't have to know. And that's pretty much how the movie ends. Although there is this like little stinger after the credits where all the kids from the movie world wash up in the real world. <laughs> So like the first two thirds of this movie is actually not that bad really. I mean it's kind of cliche and all that but like having Mac and Brady be self aware and have this kind of like tongue in cheek humor going on. I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. But then the last third just turns into like complete nonsense and feels totally different than the rest of the movie. I mean imagine if the end of Camp Rock was just like a UFO abducting all the kids for like no reason. But like really though the movie would have been so much better if it was just about Mac and Brady like breaking up at the beginning and then they get sent to the alternate dimension. They have to bring Tanner and Layla together which helps them learn about their own relationship. I mean, it's the perfect backdrop for a solid teen rom-com. But then, you know, they just have to go and Disney Channelify it. The thing about Teen Beat's movie that really struck me as odd was just like, the more I watched it, the more I realized that we know nothing and we learn nothing about almost any of these characters whatsoever. Like, who is Brady? He's Mac's boyfriend. They live, I assume, like California, somewhere on the West Coast. 
and for some reason Mac's grandfather is best friends with Brady. Like the only character that has any development or growth or anything is Mac. The, the movie's basically just like at the beginning Brady's like I just want to surf and watch movies all day and Mac's like no we gotta think about our futures and then at the end of the movie Brady's like I just want to surf and watch movies all day and then Mac's like yeah okay that's like the extent of anyone's growth or even like the throwaway villains that they have you know the the rich guy and then the scientists so they want to take over the beach but like like throughout the entire movie these two are just kind of like talking about their diabolical plan and then just laughing about it for like 10 minutes here and there and then right at the end that's when they finally like actually do something for maybe five minutes and then it's all over anyway so it's like haha we're bad guys nope just kidding we're done they should have just kept it the whole like rom-com thing about like you know they separate tanner and layla they got to put them back together again but that means that they have to think about their own relationship and like you know you could have had the whole thing about how do they get into the movie and get out of it well that could have just been about the magic surfboard because like there's kind of these hints that like the surfboard is maybe magical I guess doing it that way is like kind of cliche but it makes way more sense and is way more digestible than like oh by the way there's an evil scientist in a lighthouse who does nothing until the very end and then it doesn't happens anyway okay thanks bye but anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so I don't miss any videos from me. Follow me on Twitter. Let me know what's the favorite part of the video or or what video I should do next or just say hi, whatever. That's fine, too. Follow Charlie on Instagram, Charlie Meets Pumpkin. Charlie has a TikTok now, Charlie underscore mom. It's in the description below. And above all else, everybody have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.